Okay, the purpose of this tutorial is going to be to show you how to um, disintegrate a poly polygon plane using particles. So, first thing we need to do is go ahead and create a polyplane. So, make sure you're in your polygons menu. Go to create polygon primitive plane. And you just click. It's a little small. Just scale it so you can see it. Alright. Doesn't really matter the size. You could kind of do what you want here. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to assign a Lambert to it and give it a texture file. So, I'm going to do this via the um, Hypershade Editor. I usually don't do that, but we'll do it in this tutorial. So, we're going to go to Window, Rendering Editors, Hypershade. And um, I already made a Lambert here. I'll just go ahead and delete it and make a new one. Just click Lambert. Double click your Lambert 2. Go to your color map right here. Go to File, Browse. Mine's saved on my desktop. You could use whatever you'd like. And um, go ahead and just middle mouse button. And I'm holding down my mouse wheel. Clicking and letting go right here. Okay. And I'm just going to um, go ahead and rescale my plane. So it looks like this. I'm going to rotate it a little. Let's go to my channel box and put the rotate to 90 degrees. Let's do negative 90. And put the rotate Y to 90. Put this to negative 90. This is rotate Z. Scale doesn't matter. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to freeze the transformations so we clear out the channel box with all zeros. The way you do that is you click on the polyplane and you go to modify, freeze transformations. And what that does is if you notice now in your channel box, all these values are reset. Um, this tricks the computer into thinking that this was the original position for the plane. Okay, so let's go ahead and continue. Now, what we have to do now is we have to, um, they suggested when I was watching the video online, is go to high quality rendering. Okay. If that slows you down too much, ignore that step. I might actually... Uh, We'll see if that slows it down. It, it may. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we are going to create a ramp. So what you want to do is, in your Hypershade Editor here, you want to find the node that says Ramp. It's under 2D Textures. It's near the bottom, Ramp. Just go ahead and click on that. So there is my ramp. Okay. And you'll notice that you could click on Textures here and... You know, it's right here, or you could go to materials. If you go to materials, you don't see the ramp. If I go on textures, I see my ramp. Okay. Now, what we want to do is we want to double click on the ramp, and we want to set this ramp up to go from a little, tiny little speck of white on the bottom all, and all black to a little tiny speck of black on top and all white. That's how we're going to get our transparency. So, what we're going to do is we're going to X off this middle. Um, box here on the ramp and we're just going to simply bring this top circle down right there and we're going to make this white and again what this is going to do is um, the white's going to be the things that are visible and we're going to make this right here black and the black will be the slide that over the um, parts of the object that are going to be opaque. So the white is transparent and the black is opaque. So what's happening is there's going to be a little tiny transparency part in the back and the rest of it will be opaque. Okay. What we want to do now is um, we are going to key this. We're going to go to frame one. Okay, we're going to make sure. Let, let's... Um, Let's do 100 frames on our animation. Make sure you click right here and put 100 frames. You see where it says selected position here? We're going to go ahead and key that. So we're going to key both of them, the black one and the white one. We're going to start out with the white one. Right click and go to set key. What's it say? Oh, selected position. Whoops. Set key. There we go. And we're going to do the same thing with the black color. Select the position, set key. So now we've set the key in keyframe one. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead 
and we're going to go to frame, well, we're going to go to our final frame here, which is, for me, it's 100. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and drag it up to the top, and we're going to make a little tiny, just a little tiny speck of black here on the top, just like this. So what this means is the entire thing is going to be transparent and just the end of it will be opaque. So we're going to click on the white, on the white one. We're going to go to selected position. Again, make sure you're in frame 100 and uh, set key. And it'll say result one down here if you did it right. And then we're going to do it with the black. And we're going to right click and we're going to go to set key. So if you notice, as you go through the ramp, it's going from totally opaque to you could see right here where it says texture sample to uh, just a, a little bit opaque right there on the top. That's good. Um, what, the, what the instructor did when I watched this video on YouTube is he actually um, made a different ramp for each one. I'm going to try not doing that and we will see what happens. Hopefully it works. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to select our plane. Let me see here. We're going to select our plane. And we're going to go to our Dynamics menu. I'm just going to minimize this Hypershade window. Go to your Dynamics menu and go to your particles and then emit from object. Go to your option box. And we're going to put emitter type as surface because we're emitting from the surface and we're going to put rate we're going to put 80,000. It's a lot. And we're going to put speed at 0. And click create. Okay? Now what we're going to do is we're going to open the attribute letter in the emitter and we're going to drag the, uh, we're going to go to the texture emissions attribute. So what we're going to do is, we're going to go to the emitter, and we're going to go to texture emissions attribute, which is right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to drag the file to particle color. So what do I mean by that? We're going to open up our attribute letter, and we're going to, and we're going to middle mouse button our texture file, middle mouse button from, you could do it up here, from the work area, or if you don't have your work area, go to materials, and middle mouse button from Lambert 3, or yours might be Lambert 2, and drop it in the particle color. So now what will happen is my particles will be colored like the image. Okay. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to check inherit color. What this does is when we add um, per particle attribute, for color, it'll it'll take it. I'll explain that later. And then we're going to middle mouse button the ramp to the texture rate. So we have our ramp here. If you go to your textures, we have our ramp. We're going to middle mouse button this. Whoops. Make sure you're back on your particles. Let's see here. Just go to your uh, window outliner. Might make this easier. And go to your emitter one. And you're going to go to your texture rate and um, middle mouse button the ramp right onto it. Right there. So now the texture rate has the ramp. Okay. And you also want to click enable texture rate. Okay. Now since what we did was you notice you have your emitter and we clicked inherit color and enable texture rate. In order for this to actually work, what we need to do is we need to go to our particle shape and you'll notice that there's no um, per particle attribute here, and there's no um, there's no, nothing for the color or the uh, what do you call it transparency. So we have to go ahead and make those. So what we want to do is we want to go ahead and go to um, color per particle, add attribute, and go to color oh, cancel and go to opacity per particle, add attribute. Now we don't have to do anything here because what we that'll just enable uh, that'll take it from let me show you that will take from here 
from the texturing attributes of the uh, emitter. Okay, so it'll take from, where are we? From here, the inherit color enable. If you don't click these, our particles won't have any color. All right, now what we want to do is we want to assign ramp one uh, to the transparency of Lambert two. So go to your materials here in your hypershade, double click on our, for me it's Lambert three, and I want to now go to my textures tab, and I want a middle mouse button right to there. Okay, done. And then what I want to do is I want to change the uh, ramp from U to V. Let's see, do I need to do that? Oh, no. Okay, I'm going to pause this video and recover the file real quick. Or not. Okay, I'm back and I remade the file. The reason why the file crashed on me was when I went to the particle and I went to the emitter, I had 80,000 here. Don't make it 80,000 because our computers will crash. You need a very, very good computer to do 80,000 particles. We're going to do 8,000. Okay, so now when I hit play, you'll notice that my particles are, my surface is disintegrating, and my particles are following. It's perfect. It's exactly what we want. Okay, very good. So you can see the surface is... But the only thing is we don't want the ramp to go up like it is from the long side. We want to go make it go across. So what we want to do is go to window and go to your hypershade window. And we're going to go ahead and go to our textures and double click on your ramp. And we're going to put U ramp. And this is going to make it, if you hit play, so this will make it go across. All right. All right, so when I was remaking it, what I forgot to do is I forgot to add the uh, RGB PP and the um, opacity PP. So yours will look more like this. Okay. It's pretty much what we want. The last thing we need to do is, well, we're not going to increase the emissions rate. We're going to change the lifespan of particles uh, to go um, 1 and a 0.25 death rate. So we're going to go to our emitter, and we're going to go to our lifespan. I always forget where this is. And we're going to go to random range. We're going to have it last one second with a uh, 0 0.25 um, flexibility. And we're going to assign a turbulence field to the particles. So we're going to click on the particles. Just make sure you go to frame one here. Click on the particles. Go to your dynamics menu. And go to fields and turbulence. And let's see how this looks. And there you go. Um, you might want to hide the plane. For some reason, I'm not, I'm not getting the transparency on the plane. Let's see what I did wrong. Let me go to my Lambert 1 window. Rendering editor's hypershade. Let's go to my Lambert 1, Lambert 2 rather. Yep, doesn't look like the transparency is animating. Not a big deal. Okay, so what I did right here was I turned on my, uh, my high quality render, and you're getting this. Looks cool. The only problem is these particles are not textured. So what we want to do is we want to go to particle 1, and right here under the color, we need to texture this. So we go to our materials, and we middle mouse button right to our color. And now we'll texture the particles just like the color. And I think I have to hit maybe 6 to see this. And probably not enough particles to kind of see it. You'd probably have to put your emissions rate higher, but that's what it's going to do. And there you go. I hope you found this informative and useful and uh, you're able to apply this to your own projects.